Hello everybody, Tim Norris here, aka Grey Elephant. I'm Carmen Norris. And welcome to a quick review by Grey Elephant Gaming. Today we're going to be talking about... Aquasphere. Oh, that's Feldy Delight, I tell ya. Alright, so the purpose of this video is to give our opinion quick and to the point. But if they want to know more about this game, what should they do? If you want to know more about the game, you can watch us play it out in real time on our live play. No artificial time, that is real time, baby. Yes. Now, what we do for this quick review, we write down our thoughts so we don't miss any points. So if you see us looking down, it's probably because we just want... My thoughts like a news reporter. <laughs> now, you are first on the list, so... I am first! I would have to say, compared to other felds, I find this game more challenging. You know, believe it or not, I really do. Uh, I think it's definitely a brain burner. <laughs> there, there are a lot of options, but but it does not feel point salad-y. And the reason is that those options are not always available to you. First of all, you can only program two robots, so you know that kind of limits your options per turn right there. Uh, then it's it's like a feld in some ways. But you have to build an engine, so you have to concentrate on that, drop subs so that you will have more time each round. My game started going much better when I concentrated on that first. I agree with you. And I like how that you are limited by the size of your lab. And you yeah. can only store so many cards, so much time, uh, so many crystals, or capture so many squids. Uh, friendly capture and release yes. of the squids. We're not slaying those no. squids, as we say oftentimes in the live place. Uh, but this makes it to where you really want to expand your lab as quickly as possible. But then again, you also want to take advantage of what is you know, best available to you. So, I mean, it's a cool little balance between point grabbing and also planning for the future. No matter what, you always got to remember that time is fuel. I mean, you've got to have time in this game. Each round, right. time should always be the first and foremost uh, thing that you're wanting to try to plan around each round. Well, compared to other felds, you know, I said it was more challenging. But I would also have to say it is less dry because the theme and the components are very different and fun. Yeah. Um, but if I had a negative about that, it's that the components get, the board gets kind of busy. I have trouble seeing, you know, the different symbols that I need to see, especially when I'm trying to look for the letters when I pick up uh, one of the lab tiles. Mm -hmm. Well, it is busy. I mean, but a lot of field games are very busy. Yeah. And, and Bora Bora was the first game that came to my mind. When I first opened up Bora Bora and I looked at the player boards, like, oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I, that was pretty overwhelming. Very intimidating. And this one does the same thing. Um, but let's face it, just like all other fields, the more that you play it, the easier it does become, you know, the easier it becomes to be able to spot what you're looking for on each one mm -hmm. of the uh, little sections of the board. Um, and that's just the thing. I mean, there's only so many different things that's different from one section to the next on the board. I mean, really it comes down to a letter. Each section has a different letter. Right. And each section has a different programmable robot, a different feature that you would use. But, you know... I guess you could say that, you know, you could throw in the cards and also the lab ex expansions onto it. But, uh, you know, at the same time, I like it. I think it's very colorful and it's a it's a pretty board. I mean, Trojan is boring to look at. I <laughs> right? mean, you look at Trojan, you're like, that's just dry as toast, baby. Whereas this one, I mean, you got some jam on that bread. <laughs> it's got a lot of color and I think it looks beautiful. I love looking at the board. It does kind of make it more fun, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, when we first start playing the game, or when we're pretty tired, sometimes we skip steps because I I, oh, yeah. I feel like that there this game uh, is pretty complex, and sometimes there's steps and there's so much to remember. For exact for example, <laughs> I'm sorry. When you take a tile, you're supposed to place your robot where uh, the letter is on the board, and sometimes I would forget to do that. And I would say that between each round, it can be confusing on making sure that you don't skip any steps on setup. Um, but I, I strongly recommend that you pay attention. It is um, page 10 on the rule book, all right? They did a fabulous job of putting this together and breaking it down step by step so you know exactly how to... And in fact, if you watch our live play, you'll notice I refer to this because it's just so well done. I mean, it just do this, then do this, then do this. And it becomes very intuitive and natural after a while. Then if you turn over to uh, the next page, page 11, it just shows you how to set up the very next round. And just do that. The fir very first few times that you're playing, just take it step by step, turn it over, do that. And I'll tell you what, it'll help you out a lot. You're not going to miss anything because there have been times when we first were playing, it was like, oh, crud, we're supposed to you know, take yeah. that off or, oh, we're supposed to do that. And, you know, and it can be a little confusing. So, But they did great on the rule book. I want to make sure I pointed that out. Reiterate it. 
Well, I think it's time to give my conclusion. Ooh. Yes. I just have to say, overall, excellent game. I mean, I'm very impressed with the game. Um, I I do find it a bit challenging. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to beat Tim at this game. I've won every game! <laughs> I am like five for five, uh, baby! Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, we'll watch while I play and find out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still fun. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to get points, uh, different things you can concentrate on, such as building up your lab or slaying the octopods. Um, <laughs> capture and release uh, oh, the I'm octopods. sorry, I'm sorry. Friendly Capturing capture and release. the octopods. Um, the lasers on the scoreboard can either hurt you or help you. So that's another thing that you can actually keep in mind and factor in when you're making your calculations. So there's just, uh, I think there's so many more things to learn that, you, you know, we're going to be playing the game a lot. Oh, yeah, and I agree with that 100%. And I wrote down four points. I want to make sure I touch on them all. But number one, I would highly recommend this game. I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. The design is just beautiful. It is very thematic, like you said, yeah. um, compared more so than some of the other failed titles. I mean, Trojan to me is, it, I mean, it just is what it is. We've seen those a dime a dozen, but how many underwater facilities where you're a scientist, <laughs> do you, have you experienced not many where you program robots? How that many really... octopods have you captured in a game? Never slay, friendly capture and release. Um, but you know what? This may have just become my favorite failed game. And I mean, that's that's saying something, guys. you got to understand. Oh. We play a lot of Phil titles. He is my favorite designer. Barnett, I love the designs that this guy does. Man, we own several of his designs. This one may be my favorite. Um, right next to Castles of Burgundy, Trojan just slightly under. Oh, man. Um, like I said, it has more flavor than I feel like uh, Castles of Burgundy or even, well, Trojan for sure. Castles of Burgundy, I think, has got some pretty decent flavor, but kind of dry flavor, whereas this one's more colorful and robust. <laughs> um, the lasers on the uh, scoreboard can be very annoying when you're first starting to learn the game. In fact, they just drove me absolutely bonkers my first game. With experience, you understand how to work them and to get past them. So you're not going to have as many problems as uh, you gain experience with that. It plays fantastic. I mean, it just plays fantastic with just two players. It plays fantastic with four players. And I just honestly can't recommend this game enough. Buy this game. If you, especially if you're a Feld fan, buy, 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 buy. I would not pass this game up. No doubt about it. So, all right. But like I said, you don't have to take our opinion on this game. What should they do? If you want to see more about the game, and you know what? We never mentioned that area control is involved as well. While you're trying to figure all this other stuff out, you've also got area control on top of it. I'm pointing to the live play! You can see <laughs> us doing this in the live play! Yes! <laughs> you can see it! It's right there! And uh, click on that. It's going to give you a great understanding on how this game plays out in real time. And you can make a decision for yourself. But I'm telling you straight up, buy the game! Don't even worry it's about it! It's awesome! Buy it! And as usual, we appreciate you watching. Bye! Bye! -bye.